What's up guys, this is Chris here, and today we're gonna be talking about three letters. P, D, W. What it stands for, do you want one, and what are the pros and cons? Now, I wanna talk about PDW's personal defense weapons, but I wanna talk about it from the perspective of the civilian, the person that's just out there trying to defend themselves, their family, and maybe the people around them. This doesn't really apply to a military or law enforcement context. They definitely have their own strategies and tactics when it comes to stuff like that that are far beyond anything that I could educate them with. I'm just simply talking about a person that might want one for specific situations that we're gonna talk about today. And if you do have one, how to use it and which one to choose. So if that interests you, stay tuned. Now, most people believe the PDW is a SMG, a subgun. They think that that only applies to specific five inch, nine millimeters SMGs. But the reality is, is that PDW can be pretty much anything that is a force multiplier that you can carry on you concealed as far as civilian context. I think that applies to a lot of different platforms, whether it comes to the, for example, Mossberg Shockwave, which we have one here, we'll show you in a second. Uh, maybe a short rifle in a 5.56 or 300 blackout configuration. Maybe a folding pistol caliber carbine. Maybe a subgun, like we mentioned earlier. Or maybe even a large handgun that matches the size, pattern, or magazine capability of your carry gun. The personal defense weapon has been around for, again, a really long time. Some of the oldest iterations that I can think of would be the the M1 carbine, for example, which was designed for very specific purpose, which is to protect rear echelon troops, mechanics, medics, stuff like that. And they've still been using that basic concept today. How it applies to you in a civilian context is basically a bag gun or a gun that you can keep under a jacket or maybe a very large handgun that you can stow appendix carry without revealing too much. Now, of course, the first style of gun we're gonna be talking about is going to be the sub gun, the five inch pistol caliber carbine. Usually those include like the MP5K, the Chris Vector, which we have here, the B&T APC-9, basically a five to eight inch nine millimeter PCC works very well for this. And the reason why that is, is because most of the time they don't need a buffer system so they can fold right out of the factory. You don't need to buy a law folder or anything like that, which works really well. This one here takes standard Glock mag. So if you carry a Glock like a 19 or a 17 or a 26, this could really work well for you because you can use the same, not only magazines, but the same ammunition in your pistol caliber carbine. Now you do get more ammunition with this. You do get a higher uh, force multiplier capability because you have a better dot, you have a cheek weld, you have a light, which is really nice. Not only a light, but a powerful light that you can use to defeat people with light and you can see from long distances. And you obviously get range and capacity out of the deal. Now, another factor that I wanna talk about when it comes to PDWs is scare factor. Now, that's a weird one because is everybody gonna get scared? No. Is no one gonna get scared? Also, no. If you carry a handgun and you pull that handgun out against multiple opponents, like four or five opponents, let's say, they may not be as deterred as they would be looking at this space aid fucker right here. So there is a little bit of a fear factor or a shock and awe factor with a PDW as well that can't really be quantified, but it is there. The pros and cons of something like that goes, the pros as I see it are you have it when you need it. If you have something like this, for example, you're gonna have it on you, whereas you might have a Barrett 50 at home or maybe a Bossberg 590, but it's not gonna do you any good. I would consider that exemplified by the large handgun so let's say you carry a staccato CS and you have a staccato XC in a bag or you have it in your car and make sure if you're gonna leave stuff in your car to stow it properly because we don't want to get these things stolen and then have them used in crimes and you don't have to want to contact the ETF so make sure that if you are gonna store a gun in your truck that you store it correctly make sure it's hidden make sure it's locked all that stuff make sure it's unaccessible by children we're just kind of assuming in this video that you know how to do all that stuff so now a large handgun is going to be in the similar vein of a PDW, it's a, in my opinion, it's gonna require a lot more skill to use. You have similar capacity with this, similar barrel length, similar caliber as a PDW, but a handgun is much harder to shoot than a rifle. However, a large handgun like this Takato XC is easier to shoot than a small handgun. And that's one of the reasons why I would include the large handgun in the PDW or personal defense weapon list, because you could have something like this Canic Meta in your bag or in your car for emergencies, and you could carry this uh, Canic MC here, and it's still the same in some cases magazines, in some cases not, but still the same ergonomics and it's still the same caliber that you are accustomed to. It's just gonna be a higher capacity and easier to shoot platform. 
So obviously the PDW is gonna be easier to use than a handgun. It's gonna be more concealable than a rifle. Obviously gonna be higher capacity than a handgun. It's gonna be easier to shoot with more points of contact. And it's gonna be easier to use in cramped spaces like a car or a tank or something like that than a large rifle would be. Even though you are ballistically inferior due to the shorter barrel and probably the pistol caliber, although in not in some cases, which we'll talk about in a second, uh, you certainly are having some trade-offs. Now, the large handgun is, I would think, probably gonna be the go-to for most people. And the reason for that is because it's the easiest to carry. You could actually supplement your concealed carry gun for a large handgun in a lot of these situations. Let's say you live in a high-risk area, you're a single mom, and you have to walk home from your waitress job every night, and you have a lot of cash on you. Well, that's a pretty high-risk position to be in. So maybe when you go to the mall in the middle of the day, maybe you carry your MC9, and when you're walking home at night from the diner or wherever you work, maybe then you carry the large frame handgun and you can carry it in the same configuration that you carry your other handgun in. If you carry appendix, you carry in your purse, you carry small at the back, you can carry the same way with a larger handgun. So I would consider this probably the most practical use of a PDW for civilian use. However, the upgrade to that is obviously going to be something like the Vector or something like the SP5K, for example, or the BNT APC9. All three of those are excellent choices. Pretty expensive but you can get into a PDW frame like this for cheaper as well. Look up Freedom Ordnance pistols or maybe the X-Star uh, AP9, like $350, and they can be very compact as well. You don't have to spend a shitload of money to have a more capable platform like something like this. Now, I wanted to talk about kind of the new, I guess not new with this gun, but it's kind of a new trend with a lot of guns, and I would consider also the folding carbine to be a PDW. Obviously, it still applies to all the same rules. You have more capacity, more points of contact, more barrel length, more ballistic capability, it obviously folds into a small enough package to where you can deploy it very quickly. So you could have this in a bag and you could unfold this bad boy and uh, rack the charging handle relatively quickly. And then instead of a nine millimeter uh, with three inch barrel and 15 round magazine, you could have you know, 25, 30 round magazine with a 16 inch barrel, a red dot and a light and all that stuff. Uh, so the folding carbine is definitely going to be another possibility when it comes to PDWs. I would consider the better version of this probably the Smith & Wesson FPC. Uh, it's about $100 more than this. You're going to get a higher capability as far as the gun goes, more reliable, more accurate, that kind of thing, more shootable. Uh, however, they're basically the same thing when it comes down to the philosophy of this video. And they are a large frame gun that you can fold out and get in action quickly. That's still a pistol caliber that still runs Glock mags, by the way. And the Smith will run Smith mags, which is kind of nice. So if you carry a Smith, maybe go that route. If you carry Glock, maybe go this route. And uh, you can still have that same capabilities you had on the Chris Vector. And now these come for like 400 bucks. And then the Smith is like 550. So still affordable and still a up in capability. And these are super light, four pounds. So if you put it in a bag, you won't notice too much. However, again, not as portable as maybe something like this. Similar capabilities if you know how to shoot that, but this is obviously gonna be much easier. Uh, it's usually better to have a shoulder fired weapon. They're much more effective statistically as far as if you look at uh, self-defense shootings, uh, shoulder fired weapons are, are very good. Now, this is certainly an option and a very popular option too, because it doesn't come with any of the legalities of an SBR or braces or anything like that. You just have a standard rifle that you can usually buy when you're 18 years old and you can fold this up and carry it around wherever you want and nobody's gonna know. Now again, if you are carrying a bag gun, make sure you keep that on you and you just don't set it down next to you subway and then you look down and it's gone, you gotta call the ATF, don't do that. So keep in mind, this still has the same cons as this. You just uh, get a rifle instead of a pistol and you get a longer barrel, which gives you a little bit more velocity and a little bit more expansion with some hollow points, but that's up to whichever ammunition that you use. Let's talk about this right here, which a lot of people don't talk about. Now, this is another one of those along the lines of iffy. It's very, very capable if you are good with it. And I happen to be good with one of these. I can shoot these really well. And that's why a lot of times when I see reviews of the Mossberg Shockwave, or, you know, Remington has their semi-automatic version, which is really cool too. Um, now, a lot of people say these are bullshit. They say that they're not useful. They're useful. Trust me, they're gonna know they got hit by it. For some reason, people think these are a gimmick, but if you are able to use this zero to 25 yards, which is gonna be self-defense distance anyway, which I personally am, so if I can do it, other people can do it, I'm not that special. And if you train with this, this can be super, super lethal and super effective. This can also be stowed in a bag, and it's not much bigger than something like the Vector or something like the SP5K. And obviously you have a full full caliber 12 gauge or 20 gauge, whichever one you wanna choose. 
you can keep ammo on the gun. And I know we're gonna be limited capacity with something like this, like five rounds, but you're way up in the lethality. So usually in shotgun altercations, one round does a good job. So you just need one round on target and they're gonna be a little bit more difficult to shoot because of the recoil and because of the ergonomics of the gun than even a handgun, but hit per hit, this is gonna be doing a lot more damage. Uh, 12 gauge nine pellet is gonna be like nine rounds of 45 hitting them all at the same time. So very impressive uh, as far as lethality, not so impressive as far as ergonomics, and you're gonna need to train a lot with this, but again, another super cheap PDW that you could keep in your truck, you could keep in a bag, and you could get this out and get it in action very quickly and be super lethal in close quarters, and that is what I would consider the definition of a PDW, so it would definitely apply. And if you wanna go that route, this route, or the shotgun route makes no difference to me, whichever one works the best for you. So uh, also has that intimidation factor. You know, these people say pump the shotgun and they run away. But the reality is, is if you do have a <laughs> bird's head 12 gauge and you point that at somebody, they're gonna be less inclined to attack you than they were before. <laughs> Let's go with that. So obviously you can add lights, you can add optics, you can add ammunition. And I think this is certainly a viable uh, self-defense option for the PDW. Is it the best option? No. I would consider it to be a less viable option than something like the Vector or even the kel -Tec. Not because of the lethality, but because of the accuracy. So first off, you, you have some accuracy issues. Now I can hit a man-sized target at 25 yards any day, all day. But if we talk about, let's say, a hostage situation, you're shit out of luck. If your wife gets taken hostage and you have one of these, man, whew, she's not gonna like it if you get eight on him and one on her, you know what I mean? So there's some cons to that, but again, there's some pros and it's up to you whether you use one or not. Now, what I think would probably be the best option, although I would consider it to be the most weight and probably the most expensive in order to get into the game is gonna be the 300 blackout. This right here is my Spear LT that I just got this, but it basically symbolizes a new breed of PDW. So obviously a, a BCM nine inch 300 blackout with a law folder will still apply. I like the MCX platform because it doesn't have a buffer tube, so you can just fold it and it becomes very, very small, the same size as a Chris Vector, not quite as small as like an MP5K, but pretty close. You can get the Sig Rattler with a five inch barrel. Now, the advantages of the MCX are going to be the same as a 9mm PDW. You don't get the ammunition compatibility with your handgun, but you do get a much higher lethality caliber. And I would recommend 300 blackout with this because if you get something in 5.56, it's going to be very, very loud. And the shorter barrel you go with 5.56, usually the less reliable the platform and the less lethality you get out of the caliber. Whereas 300 blackout is designed for PDWs or short barreled guns and a heavier bullet going slower so it's not quite as loud on your ears and on top of that pretty lethal heavier bullets usually do better in shorter barrels in my personal opinion so i like the 300 blackout i would consider it the best option however these come in even a bcm 300 blackout is going to be 1800 2000 dollars and this is going to be more than that this is going to be 2000 or 2500 dollars you get this out with an optic you're going to three thousand dollar platform and the concept for me of putting a three thousand dollar platform in a bag and potentially getting it stolen is scary, especially, I mean, it's basically the cost of a, of a used car. <laughs> so is it gonna be the best in the situation? Absolutely. Is it also gonna be the most weight? Yes. Is it gonna be the most price? Yes. Is it gonna be the least concealable? Probably. So. It certainly is a viable option, and I like 300 Blackout a lot. Overall, I think it's a great option, but I think the price kind of outprices a lot of people. Now, you can get into cheap AR uppers and then throw a folding stock on it, and you can go that route. However, again, be careful about pistol and SBR rules these days. Fucking ATF's changing rules all the time. Different rules state to state, so make sure that you're just paying attention to those things, especially if you're traveling. Now, in my personal opinion, are PDW is a good idea for civilians? Yeah, I think so. I think the more armed and the more capable people out there, the people that are there defending other people when the cops don't show up or when they're too late or when there's no police around to begin with is a good idea. Doesn't look for trouble, but responds to it when it shows up. And I think it's a good platform for that, but I do think it comes with a lot of responsibility. Just like a concealed carry gun, but maybe amplified slightly even more. And the reason why I say that is because on the body carry is a pretty safe way to go. Whereas a PDW is a couple of steps 
behind a handgun in the deployment process and in my opinion a couple of steps behind a handgun as far as the safety of carrying it make sure you keep it out of people's hands that shouldn't have it and make sure to get it in your hands quickly there's always going to be pros and cons there's always going to be trade-offs to everything and nothing is better than anything they're always just going to be trade-offs considering on what you think you're going to run into so really consider your situation and consider what's right for you if you like this video please like and subscribe please support your Oklahoma shelters and remember to recycle I'll check you later